I promised to, to show you the uh, product here in a little bit. But I want to kind of go over some things with you on the PowerPoint and uh, to get uh, your an idea of what uh, our desk event our publisher is actually and what it can do for your organization. A couple house cleaning things. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and submit them in on the box on your right, and you can go ahead and type in a question. Uh, what we'll do, this this will take, uh, I don't think this will take an hour, so uh, we'll try to get this wrapped up and then you can answer questions then. Uh, we'll probably will have you guys submit your questions and then what I'll do is I'll put them all on a, uh, an FAQ document and get that out to you you guys to all those who have. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, and uh, there again, uh, welcome to our co web guest. So what I want to talk to you this afternoon is about the uh, Autodesk Inventor Publisher 2012. So it's just more about creating assembly instructions and user manuals for you know, machinery or products. So it's about leveraging your div, uh, design data to explain your ideas and products in a modern, interactive way. Enable you to engage in a wider audience and talk about how it's made, how it's serviced, how it's used, or simply what's great about it. You know, as, as, as you all well know, product documentation is a critical part of your whole product. And in fact, it's, it's the most uh, first part of product that a user sees is the, the product manual. And we've all seen those manuals where you, you open up and get some instructions and you end up not uh, watching them and you end up doing it yourself. So documentation is delivered in different ways to different audiences, uh, to your manufacturing team, your end customers, your field technicians, distribution sales partners. Each of these audiences have different needs and technical instructions in a way that they can easily understand what you're trying to engage them with. Uh, so technical product documentation is very important to success of your product. And it's an area where we think there are significant challenges that uh, in, in. So as you see, everything that gets designed needs instructions. Uh, some kind of, uh, whether it's assembly instructions or repair instructions. Uh, we've all had to deal with different types of them. Uh, and some of these you, uh, you, would, you would have recognized. And back here, are these? So these are some of the things you know. Like you guys have seen in the past, where you've got you know, step one, step two. So if you ever bought anything from IKEA or something like that, you know everything needs assembly. And it's kind of interesting. You might use power tools to assemble a product. So as you can see, this is just a snapshot, just an image of what a lot of folks see out there today. And it's frustrating, you know, to look at this and try to figure out how to put something together. So, you know, everything from as simple as a computer desk to some complex industrial machinery. You know, take this seed tender. It's called uh, Seed Runner, manufactured by a great customer of ours, uh, Univert. And uh, can you imagine, you know, if this farmer had to go and figure out how to, to replace a bolt or a bearing or something, you know, go back to the barn and look at the manuals. So this is common of what we see after a lot of our customers. Another customer uh, is talking about how it improves their time of market by doing the documentation you know, online with, uh, with their engineers. So a lot of folks are taking their engineering data at the very end and then doing all your documentation here for holding up the whole process here. So let's look at a couple of challenges, uh, those are challenges today. Uh, first one's obviously, and most of you probably run into this today, is a disconnect between documentation process and your engineering resources. So it's complete, you know, what generally happens is the engineering folks get their done their models, get all the information over, and then uh, that's where the process goes to product documentation to create that, those, those documents. Uh, so what's that mean to the owner? It's, it's uh, time to market delays. Documentation can be probably is a bottleneck in the product on market. And then at the end, of course, poor customer experience. Like I said, most folks, their first introduction to your product after the sale would be to look at the uh, assembly instructions and you know, right away they might get frustrated and therefore uh, lead to a lack of success with that particular product. So what you're seeing here is, is a report from Everdeen Group talking about visualization and the enterprise value of a 3D product models. And what they've done is take what, what's common about these best in class companies, and, and you can see static 3D imagery, interactive documentation, field service training processes, assemblies, some of the, the attributes of those best in class companies. And what they're found in these best-of-class companies, 90% of them 
meet their product launch dates. So all these, you know, if you're considered a best in class company, these are some of your attributes. Ninety percent of those, <coughs> excuse me, meet product development budget targets. Another ninety-one percent of products meet product revenue targets, and you can see the rest there. So these are some of the attributes of what uh, Aberdeen considers a best in class company. So today's customer, they expect 3D product information. So 3D now is a business normal. If you ever go out to a Ford website or TMAC or you know, go and try to order a car, a lot of it's done with 3D. And 80% of these, these images make them more likely to purchase that product. 50% would be more likely to purchase 3D instructions. And it's interesting, 55% they would be less likely to return a product after reviewing it in 3D meaning they, they understand your product, how to take it apart, put it together, and maintain it. So these, these type of companies are using software to do this, to increase their product documentation, uh, reduce service support and training costs, accelerate this time the market, and on your sales force with 3D to help uh, improve your customer experience. And what you're seeing here is, is the iPhone. This, is, there are some mobile apps that we'll talk about later on how this works then. So the typical workflow uh, for an vendor work uh, publisher would be to insert the particular model from the vendor into the, uh, into the venture publisher. The next step then would be to offer that part by adding your snapshots, your views, your, your details, that kind of information that you want to get across that customer, and then publish that out in a, a whole variety of different formats to do that. So, with this process, it allows you to get that market faster. You can leverage that CAD data right away. So in other words, your documentation team can be starting to develop your tech manuals online at the same time as your engineering and design you know, these assemblies. <clears throat> I'll give you an example of how uh, they get updates and the links between the two. Understand, uh, Publisher also will import different uh, common software and file types, uh, uh, types that step by just SAP, Pro, ETL. And you can see the list there. So easily turn what, what you already have, what you already own, but you're reproducing is the ability to, to turn the data into an interactive storyboard, changing appearance styles, materials, component capability and placement, camera angles, animation and timing, errors, text description, and component parts list tables are all about to be some of the things you can do with publisher. The different uh, outputs we would have for that is under documents, you can create the Word documents, PowerPoint, Adobe, PDFs, uh, different images you can post, different animations, Adobe Flash and video, and interactive 3D with mobile, 3D PDF, and GIF. Enabling your company to, to reach out to this. We have a customer in the Lancaster area currently using this with their iPads when the guys the quality Control folks are out in the plant floor actually checking drawing, checking things on their iPad to update and make sure that they're getting the right, right revision, right information back from the engineer. There's a whole world of uh, opportunities there to publish these, these documents too. So without further ado, I'll just go ahead and go right into the demonstration and we'll talk about the uh, venture publisher. So prior to going into uh, publisher, I'll go ahead and take, show you a model I'm going to be working with. Uh, this is Inventor 2012 Professional. Uh, this particular install is part of the factory design suite ultimate. So I'm looking at this particular model. It's, it's a, it's a uh, pressure attachment, um, a mechanical component that we're going to do some documentation for. So we'll come right on over to uh, Publisher and we're going to go ahead and insert that into our Publisher document. Selecting at, I'm going to go ahead and import the uh, the bill of material type as well, and select OK. And what it's going to do, it's going to take our uh, assembly and load that where we can start to see the information here. So after replacing that in, into our into, into the publisher, a couple options we have here. What you're seeing here in this frame here is the output. For example, if I go in and change that, and we'll go ahead and make an edit, 
what it's looking for is the size here. These are preset sizes built in. So depending on what your output needs to be, you can change the, uh, the format width and height. So we're going to go ahead and stay with uh, this particular format, 16 by 9, and then just left OK. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn that ring over that, and I'm going to turn the visibility off that area so as to not uh, distract us here. So over here on the left, is a breakdown of, a, of the particular model that we see over here in the browser here. And this will similar, for those of you familiar with Inventor, this will uh, similar to what you see on your model browser over here, on your uh, top level assembly and different uh, assemblies here. And we're going to be actually working on this particular component right here. So as you can see, by just highlighting the rumble left, it's highlighting those sections in Publisher so you can see what, what components they are. So if you're not familiar with that assembly, if, in this case, I want to work with this uh, this component right here. And just by right-clicking that selection, I'm going to go ahead and isolate that selection. And bring that seam up there. Then before I do anything else, uh, in order to get all our shots, I'm just going to right click here and we'll do new snapshots. You think of this uh, as if you were taking a, a camera out, out the plant floor. So you're taking pictures of each one of these. As I rotate something, I can put everything around. I can right click and say new snapshot and go back. And it saves all those snapshots for you as you're going forward. Later on, we'll go ahead and explode that and we'll talk about some files. Uh, next step then, maybe maybe we will take this and we will explode that. So I'm going to highlight all this information. And I'm going to here, I'm going to automatically explode that. Prior to using Publisher, a lot of our customers were just using going to Inventor, creating what we call a presentation file, and then just taking uh, a static uh, screenshot of that as part of documentation. The problem with that is, obviously, if something changes, how do we reflect that in all our documentation? Some controls we have up here, which increase the size of the explosion. So we have to you know, just bring it back to 100. And by selecting uh, apply, it's going to go ahead and apply all that. And if you notice on the bottom, all the different uh, snapshots we saved for us at each particular step. So we'll come back here, and you can see it just rotates back and closes that in there. We can then go in there and just double click, and it will walk us through those steps here. And so at this stage, what we're doing is, is uh, we're exploring this piece one at a time, exploring all the parts out here for explosion. This could then be later on. We can go in there and actually show documentation on how things are put together. I'll let that continue there. And we'll close the presentation. Now let's go out to the very end here where it's all exploded here. I'm going to go ahead and right click this and say new snapshot. Next thing I may want to do is go in and uh, show some those materials. But prior to doing that, I'm going to come back here to the original document. And then with this snapshot, we're going to go ahead and export an image here. So the first step of the process would be to go ahead and publish that. So I'm going to select uh, publish the image. And I'm going to use a current snapshot. And this is in the storyboard down here. So go ahead and take a snapshot of that. Uh, I want the image to be a, a PNG file, but you have these choices to export to it, depending on what you prefer. In this case, we'll just go ahead and use a PNG file. You can define user-defined areas, and these are the areas we set up on our when we first brought the we'll call it again. Yeah, I'm going to select OK, and then here I'm just going to give it a name, and I'm going to call it snapshot, and we'll go ahead and replace that. Now, what can we do with this image? Let's go over here and let's go into Word here, and the obvious thing is to go in there. <coughs> excuse me. Let's go ahead and insert that image there. So there's our snapshot, and we'll go ahead and insert there. Uh, one more thing here. 
This time when we insert that, what I'd like to do is, is link that. So I'm going to do an insert and link. Select that one and make sure we have that and that places that in there. Insert. So this could be page one of our documentation. So taking that snapshot right out of publisher would assist you doing that. Now let's go back to the exploded view and bring this all the way out. Next thing you might want to do is uh, add some parts. Before we do that, let's take a look at some other options you have up here on the ribbon panel. As you'll notice on uh, most of this products out today, you'll see that uh, they're taking advantage of the ribbon panel. Everything on this, the canvas is a little bit different here. This is, has the showcase wheel, so those of you familiar with the alias kind of products or the alias or showcase, you'll recognize this type of uh, interface. And another thing is right clicking your mouse will give you the ability to actually move individual parts. You want to undo all the commands that you might reach up here at the urban town do is now you'll find the way at your fingertips by right clicking in the, in the browser area. So let's take a look at uh, this particular object here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and isolate that, and then I'm going to create a snapshot. So now that we've isolated that particular part, let's look at some different styles here. So there's some different styles uh, built in here. We're just going to use basic shading and show you that. That's where we would set at. And then we have other ones down here that you can use, depending on what you're trying to get across. Uh, technical line drawing is one we see used a lot. That would be your output there. I'm going to go ahead and create a new snapshot there. Uh, going back to the assembly here, we're going to go ahead and talk about some other things we see here. Uh, material, it, it, it'll pick on this material uh, performance on, you know, from the inventor file. Uh, the ability to do some sectioning, uh, we'll go ahead and do a section of the front. And we can just go ahead and we're going to go ahead and pull this I'll uh, just pull this across right through there, section that, and then we'll go ahead and rotate this around. And you can see it creates that section. And what it'll do, it'll put, uh, put this up on our browser that we can turn that off or off. So we'll come up here and we'll talk about a parts list. Uh, let's go to uh, parts list, and because it we, we can't brought it in from Adventure and we tried it to the project file. It knew it had that uh, parts list with that. So we're going to go ahead and bring that in. We're going to import that data. And here you have some choices on how you want to uh, configure that parts list. So I'm going to take uh, this preview off. I don't actually didn't see that from my parts list. So I'll take the preview off and remove that. It's like, okay, now we're just showing the item, part number, quantity, and so forth. I don't want to bring all these in, so I'm going to go through and select uh, the ones I'd like for this particular view. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to select 31 and 28. And notice down the bottom, create that auto balloon. So I'm going to select OK. OK, it looks like one of the parts is still are not visible. That's fine. Do you want to remove them from the parts list? No, you still want them in the parts list. So let's move that over there. You can see that this balloon is all the way actually outside of my screen that I can't grab. But let's go ahead and show some other ones here. Uh, I'm going to select a call out and just like this one here, I'm going to manually place that and I'm going to select 24. Each one of these call, call outs, you can define how you want to, to, to be configured on your screen. Right now I have it set to no fill. Uh, you want to show, uh, right now I have no border on there. You can also define what kind of shape you want that to be in, whether it's a slot around this or a circle. We'll go ahead and leave a circle there. And we'll set that to auto style, and then we'll say done. So now that we have number 24 as our parts list, we can go ahead and we can edit this parts list. So I'm going to right click that, I'm going to hit edit the parts list, and then I'm going to set that parts list to Let's include number 24. So if I'm down here to 24, select OK, 
make that exact part size. At this point, we'll go ahead and take another snapshot. So adding parts list is pretty straightforward, bringing in information right over from the model. Now, as typically happens in our business, uh, change happens. So what I'd like to do is go in here and make a change to the actual model and inventor. And this is where I was talking about where engineering and technical uh, publication staff can be working concurrently here. We're going to make uh, an edit this is subassembly. Now underneath that subassembly is this part here. And I'm going to make a real simple edit here. Uh, I'm not going to just put a chamfer on this. It's going to be fine. And yeah, hit OK. So I'm just going to make a little change there. Return that back to that subassembly. And then return it up to the whole assembly. I'll go ahead and update that. And then save the file. Now, let's go back to uh, Publisher here, and let's take a look at this, and we're going to right-click this file. We're going to check the file status of that source file. So I'll check that status. What it's doing is going out and seeing if there's been an update. In this course, in this case, we know there was, so we'll right-click that, hit source file, now we'll update the component. By doing this, what you'll find that every one of these shots will automatically update. You won't have to go back to and recreate all these. So let's go ahead and update the component. And now all your components are, are set up. So I'll come down here to step one, and you'll see that's still there. And we'll hit play. And the original 885 file that we created is now saved with that updated part. This goes, I just did the example of this one part with chamfer, but this could be for any parts, whether you're taking parts out of the assembly or updating that as you need. So I'm going to go ahead and stop, exit the presentation, and head back out here. So the storyboard will, will list all your shots. Uh, this, of course, is vault, vault uh, able. In other words, it's vault aware. So if you're, if you're working with a vault, that information will be there, and you can save it in this place. I'm not logged in the vault to do that. Uh, under the View tab, different ways you can view the particular part here with lights. Uh, you can you know, have the head right or the light cloud. This is just impacting how it looks on the screen. So we'll go back to the headlight. Different views, uh, perspective or orthographic. You keep in mind, uh, as I'm doing this and making changes, what I normally do is go through here and I create new snapshots as I go along. So as I make a change, uh, in this case, I may want to perspective, new snapshot, like that, with the graphic, right click, new snapshot. Uh, we can show a ground, ground shadow here, or no ground shadow. Keep in mind, uh, obviously, the, the strength of your video card can be put to the test here. So depending on how strong your video card is, this will help you here. And we'll go ahead and put some tool reflection on there and shows you that. So you can quickly see some of the imagery we can get from Publisher right away here. Hi, Bob. It's Christina. Hello. Bob? Yes. We have a question. I just wanted yes. to interrupt. I'm sorry. Um, it says, can you export... Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Can you export snapshot in vector file to import into other software other than Word? Uh, can you write that down? Let me, I'll have to find out. It's in the I'm questions sure. panel. I'll make sure that we get the answer. I just wanted to see if you knew. Got it. No, I did. No, I don't. Not off the top of my head, I don't. My, my gut feeling is it's no, but... Uh, because they'll, if they're bringing in an adventure model, for sure they'll have that vector information. But that's something I'll have to follow up with. But good question. Okay, just moving along here. Of your, <coughs> excuse me, your navigation tools, uh, pan, zoom, zoom, some are what you see in the CAD systems, different windows, that type of thing. So some of the publishing options you have here. Uh, or, or the video options, uh, WIF, Adobe Flash, Image, uh, WPDF, PowerPoint, Vector. That might be his question. 
published a vector format. So I'm curious to see. I've not I've not tried that, so it'd be interesting. What I'd like to do, Christine, is is try that offline, and we can get back with them, give them an answer to that. So now that we've updated that, let's go back here to Word here on this particular part. And what I want to do is I want to take this file, and I want to go ahead and update that file with the new picture. And and it's just as simple as going there and re by clicking change picture. We go back to that, that new snapshot and hit insert, and that should have updated, but it did. Okay, the last thing I'll, I want to kind of go over here a little bit are some different viewing options here, uh, and the best way to do that is just to run a short video, and, and you can see all the different publishing methods, especially that you can't see my, my iPod or, I'm sorry, my iPad here. So I've got a little video here configured that we can go in here and take a look at. Not only enough, this was actually done in 2011, but I wanted to show the folks uh, the different ways to publish that to a mobile device here. What you're seeing is working in, uh, in the software and, and publisher, and we're going to go through and we're going to see different formats here to publish that. So we're going to publish that to mobile. And you can see on his iPad too, uh, I believe that's the iPad too, He's able to take that and uh, use that to look at the instructions. Zoom in, I'm going to take that part on his iPad. I have this app on my phone as well, uh, the iPhone, and I can actually do this right on my phone, albeit a smaller form factor. So with that, uh, Christina, why don't we just kind of open this up for, uh, for any general questions? Does anybody have any questions? You can unmute yourself, I believe, at this point. Looks like there's no question. No, not quite. Uh, Christina, this is Donald Stevens. Would you uh, explain your question about publishing to other or, uh, other platforms? Uh, what did you mean by publishing? Did you mean interactive publishing? Uh, the, the different formats we have, or the, you know, like for example, if I, I could, when you when you saw this uh, go through the video, the presentation, you can export yes. that. If, yep. Yep. So these are different, just different formats. And let's just, uh, we'll just go ahead and select one here, uh, Adobe PDF. So these are all diff different types you can document. And there's some preset templates in here. And I'm just going to use uh, the visual, visual assembly instruction. I'm going to create this document. I'm going to do this as a 3D PDF. Now uh, it's going to do the 2D because I'm sure I had that Adobe on there. And then hit OK. And let's just go ahead and save that. And you can see it's going through doing that. As far as interactive, uh, that's where you would go into uh, from the DWIF file and do that. So you can actually take it like you saw in the little video I had with the iPad. Yes, so I understood. Uh, the reason I uh, was asking Christine, if you can export your images, for example, to any number of, of uh, visual formats, you can, of course, then import those most anywhere you want. Uh, Correct. So I understood her question really to be to an interactive um, format like Word, uh, like your illustration. Yeah. No. This is this this uh, the the interaction comes when uh, you know if I did a 3D export. I just don't have Adobe uh, the 3D Adobe on, on my machine, 
to show you that. Uh, <clears throat> and with with Flash, the same thing with the video. But these are your twists and uh, those formats. Understand. But, but thanks for yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Very impressive, by the way. Oh, thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? What I'd like you to do is leave you with one more video just to, um, to go through this process here. A couple things didn't pop up like I thought they would, so I wanted to show you where that was at. This one does have uh, some sound to it, so uh, you'll be able to hear, you should be able to hear some sound to this. Visual formats to bring you through technical documentation will come up. We can do better than digital paper. Today's technical publications professional uses Autodesk technology to move beyond that acuity imagery to engaging video based on a 3D digital prototype. Tools like Autodesk and Better Publisher create video and image outputs for truly interactive product documentation. Interactive documentation delivers more information than text-based alternatives and is easier for the end user to consume. Plus, using fewer words combined with clear and accurate imagery can increase customer satisfaction while also reducing translation costs. Autodesk and Better Publisher is innovative technical communication software that helps you differentiate your products with clear, accurate, and compelling so now you can see where we got that arm at. It's all part of the bigger picture there. I just kind of want to kind of give you an overview of that. This was all done with the uh, Inventor Publisher, by the way. I did just get a question about whether or not this will be available on offline. And yes, the presentation today has been recorded, and I will send the link out to you um, as a follow-up tomorrow. Okay. I also have. Uh, I can also send out my PowerPoint with that, and what I can do, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I can have my email address in that PowerPoint, so if you guys have any technical questions in nature, I can address them directly then. Great. Okay, I think that, that should about wrap it up, Christine. Thank you very much, everybody, for your attendance. And please feel free, uh, when you get the follow-up email from Christine, uh, to, to reach out to her with any questions or, or any, uh, any information at all. And with that, thank you very much. Thank you, sir.